Hello, welcome to Friendship Baptist Church Adult Sunday School Class. I'm David King, Pastor of Administration, Education at Friendship Baptist Church. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're talking about Romans chapter 15, the idea of reaching the lost. And I have one of my favorite couples at church with me today. They are just a good couple. If you know them, they make you laugh, they make you smile, they're super fun to be around. I'm going to have them introduce themselves. Go ahead. Mike Schreiber. Gwen Schreiber. And they're a part of what Sunday School class? I know, but go ahead and tell the crowd. We are part of the Sunshine Sunday School class with Mike Camp as the yep. leader. Mike is a good teacher, isn't he? He is. Yes. We love Mike. I'm so glad that you all are tuned in. We'll be talking about the idea of evangelism. Romans starts with the idea of evangelism, and the Romans chapter 15 ends with the idea of evangelism. But as we do every D-Life and as we do every adult Sunday School class, we always pray. We need to invite God in everything we do. Brother Mike's going to pray for us. Uh, Miss Gwen, do you have any prayer requests? Uh, yeah, I would like to pray for our nation and yes, everything that we're going through, and especially our uh, first caregivers, our firemen, our policemen. Yes, ma'am. Have stood behind us, and the doctors and the nurses, and I know that they this is a great sacrifice for a lot of them. The, those frontline workers need prayer right now, don't they? Mm -hmm. Even the folks, the truck drivers. I mean, uh, my brother's a truck driver. Uh, those who uh, you work at Walmart, I mean, just those who are at Kroger, whatever, those who uh, who handle things, we just need to pray for them because they're having to work through this. And obviously the, the uh, mercy personnel, the military, uh, health care workers. Uh, busy people. Busy. Yeah. How about our nation's leaders? Good Lord Almighty, we need, uh -huh. they need some help, right? I need a lot of help. Yes, uh, well, Some of them need more than others. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, I can think of a couple who need some help right now, but uh, I won't digress too much. <laughs> but, but, but you know, obviously the local, the state, the federal level, they all need prayer. Well, Brother Mike, you have a lot to pray about. Go ahead and pray, and then we'll be on page 122, and you'll explore the Bible. Go ahead, Brother Mike. Lord, we come to you and ask your help in a lot of different ways that we've discussed uh, not only all the caregivers and all the people that are working so hard to make this country function in the face of all this problem, but we also have just come off of Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. I think a day we really need to pay more attention to. It's not just a three-day weekend. These people gave everything to give us the freedom that we probably don't appreciate as much as we should. And we want to thank you for keeping it in our minds. We also want to thank you and ask your blessings for all those folks behind the scenes that we don't think about and don't mention. There are so many of them. And so many little acts of kindness that happen every day. Mm -hmm. Neighbor reaching out to neighbor and family members coming back together that hadn't in years. I'm happy to hear those stories. We ask you to look down upon us. Put your blessings upon us. And understand, we need your help. And Lord, we thank you for it. And we ask all of these in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we'll be on page 122, Explore the Bible. Now, if you don't have this for whatever reason, then just go to Romans chapter 15. I'm going to have Miss Gwen read the first paragraph of 122. And then I'll have uh, Mr. Mike uh, read the scripture references, and then we'll discuss it. But when I, uh, when I read the first chapter there on page 122, I, I thought of y'all, because y'all can remember this. Go ahead, Miss Gwen. Go ahead and read it to us and tell me what you think about it. John Reed, <clears throat> the name of the masked man known as the Lone Ranger, was rarely alone. He was, lone in, he was the sole survivor of an ambush by outlaws, but he was far from alone because he had a companion. Sometimes we may think of Paul as a Lone Ranger, but his mission required him to depend on others. The sharing of the gospel requires a team effort, and Paul reminded the Roman believers of this in the closing section of the letter. Well, do you remember the Long Ranger? I absolutely remember the Long Ranger. But I remember Clayton uh, more. I don't recall. I know who this man was. He okay. was the original. Oh, okay. The very, but he only, he's only in one, one or, or two, two episodes. Oh, I see. So Clayton Moore, the one we normally think about. Yeah. Uh, the one who, if you remember later, they said he couldn't be the ranger anymore. They took his mask away, so he had some custom sunglasses made. Oh, my goodness. Uh, do you recall that? I didn't uh, know that. Uh, then the reason I, I mentioned that here is uh -huh. because Paul wasn't the only missionary out there at the time. Right. 
But he was one that we remember for very specific reasons, right. and that's what we're talking about today is right. reach. That's right. A lot of them were very local and very limited. You're right. You know, God uses everybody. And when we get to heaven, um, <clears throat> there'll be billions of people who are there that we never read about in the Bible or never knew about in history who made a difference for Christ. Oh. I mean, billions of billions. I mean, the, the person who, who just, you know, who, who works and isn't very necessarily a social person but shares the gospel with his hands and, and with his actions changes lives. They weren't so, all Mother Teresa. That's exactly right. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm with you there. All right, Brother Mike, if you don't mind to read our scripture for us, this is where we in Romans chapter 15. Uh, this is uh, verses uh, 14 21 and then verses 30 to 33. I just so, lost my... Oh, you're fine. I just you, lost my... Oh, you're fine. Yeah, it just disappeared. Uh, well, that's fine. We got it right here. My internet connection went away. Oh, that's fine. Well, I've got some here. You want you want to read that too as well? Go ahead and give him that, Miss Gwen. We'll be on. on uh, this is on chapter chapter fifteen, verse fourteen to twenty one. Is the first ones. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, and that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. I have therefore, whereof I may glory through Jesus Christ, in those things which pertain to God. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me, to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. Though mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto, and I cannot pronounce that one. Oh, you're fine. Just keep on going. <laughs> I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build up upon another man's foundation, mm. but, as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, and they that have not heard shall understand. And I think that really, those last two lines, really kind of sum up our objectivity here. Right. As... Uh, he wasn't going to go and stomp on somebody else's parade. Right. He wasn't going to sweep in there and, 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 and take them out. He wanted to use whoever was there. Right. But his goal being the Gentiles. Right. He felt like, and I think he says this, although the language is a little archaic, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I think he makes the point here that the goal was not to boost or, boost or help out the believers but to use them right. to reach out. And that's yep. really the whole concept we're after here today. Exactly right. Paul says, it's not about me, it's about the gospel. If it's about the gospel, mm -hmm. then whether I get recognized or not, I don't care. Right. Now think through that just locally. In every church, there are people who are serving the Lord faithfully, and in every church there are people who realize that, that they think it's about them. And typically it's young believers. But really, God uses everybody. He doesn't need necessarily your talent. He just needs your availability. And Paul's saying, look, it isn't about me. I don't want to build on any muscle's foundation. I really don't want my name to be recognized. I just want Christ uh, to be focused on, and which is good. There in, uh, on page 128 in our books, it says, uh, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the Lord Jesus Christ, by the Spirit, of the love of the Spirit, to join me in my struggle by praying for God for me. Uh, pray that I may keep safe for the unbelievers in Judah and the contribution I made to Jerusalem may be favored by the Lord's people there. So I may come with joy and do God's will. So he's saying is God's will is the most important part, not man's will. When we come together as, as believers, worshiping the Lord and figuring out what God wants for us is the, is the main projective. It's not about us. All right, Mr. Mike, on page 123. Go ahead and read a couple of uh, paragraphs there. We're going to discuss that. This is good reading. Okay. And you know, before we get to it, I'm going to observe, too, that slightly before this, he talks about uh, Jerusalem uh -huh. and about 
they needed help economically, spiritually, and right. in a lot of other ways. We know this is well before his first trip there. Yes, sir. We also know this was written in about 58, or right. 58. Right. So he's planning well ahead. Mm -hmm. This is not something that happened to the spur of the moment. I, yeah. I found that was... So his vision isn't just right now, but Mike. No. His vision is later down the road, because he knows he's not going to live forever. He was planning way ahead. So think about your legacy. So as grandparents, you all know more than I would know, as grandparents, you're planning your legacy with your grandkids. Sure. You want them to know who God is. You want them to, know, to trust in the Lord even in the most difficult times. Sometimes grandkids are more receptive than their own kids, isn't that right? <laughs> very often. <laughs> yes. Very often. Very often. <laughs> she can tell you that for sure. <laughs> yeah, sometimes our grandkids can listen a whole lot better than their own kids. My father says, if I knew the grandkids were this much better, I'd have had them first. I said, that's not right, you know? But well, probably that true. Didn't compete, does yeah, that's quite right, but that's what he was trying to say. <laughs> All right, Brother Mike, go ahead and read number three. I mean, first two, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. As Paul closed his letters to the Romans, he returned to the topic of salvation, mm -hmm. but in a different context. While he had used the first part of the epistle to show that everyone needs a Savior, right. he now emphasized the responsibility Christians have to share that Savior with others. Well, now that's something that we hear every Sunday, but we don't really put in practice, do we? God calls us to make this a part of our daily life. And I mentioned to her this morning, that's something pastor mentions every time he preaches. Yeah. He always brings that up. Right. And uh, he may not faith. use the particular word evangelism, yeah, right. but he, he mentions it every time. And I think sometimes I look up there at the pulpit and I think he's looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> he's talking straight to you, right? You know, Paul says in here, in his writings to the Roman church, that's this letter to the yes, Roman church, um, is that he doesn't want to build on somebody's foundation. So that means he's going out to people that's never heard the word, which is God's command. Right. And I think, especially now in the era that we're living in, right. we get in a comfort zone, <clears throat> and that's with other Christians right. and not stepping out of that comfort zone. Mm, I mean, look how many yeah. churches nowadays only have one service a week, right. and that's it. Yeah. No visitation, no, no nothing. No no Bible study or prayer service, whatever. Well, certainly God calls us to connect. What I see interesting, and maybe y'all would agree, is when churches grow, are they growing because they're re reaching uh, the lost or, or non-believers? Are they growing because uh, uh, because existing believers feel more comfortable at that church? And and I understand the latter to a point, but we're called to reach people who aren't believers. That's the purpose. If a church is growing because people are dissatisfied and they're joining another church, Eventually, they'll be dissatisfied with that church as well. Right. Eventually, well, you know. You know, I, I'm an eternal optimist. Yeah, I understand. And, 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 <laughs> and, and we've discussed this too. Yeah. If if you move to a church or a setting or a group of people that you're right. more comfortable with, right, and you feel more of the spirit, I think you're much more likely to reach right. out and share that. Right, right. Than if you go to church out of a sense of obligation. Yeah. So I'm not sure that moving. Is it's, always a bad, bad it's always a bad thing. Yeah, can be good. But if that's the only church growth you have... There's well, a, true. You don't want that. There's a balance in there. Yeah. Yeah. There's got to be a balance. Yeah. All right, Brother Mike, uh, second paragraph that says Paul had a passion. Paul had a passion desire to extend the reach of the gospel beyond Rome to areas outside the empire. Instead of building on someone else's foundation, he wanted to reach those who had never heard the name of Jesus. Wow. Of course, the Great Commission included familiar places like Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, but it also pointed believers to wider regions, the uttermost parts of the world. The residents of those areas were heaviest on Paul's heart as he wrote this letter to the church in Rome. So not only was he planning ahead time-wise, he was looking to the command all right. the world. Right. This is Miss Gwen's got some thoughts about that. Right. The great commandment was right. that we share right. this with the you know the whole world, the earth, the entire earth, and I believe that that's what he's saying here. I don't, I don't want to go in where somebody's already laid a foundation, right. where somebody has already they're already right. Christians. I want to go out and right. fulfill my mission. And he felt like I believe if you read all of Paul's letters, mm -hmm. his mission was to reach 
the ones that has never heard the gospel. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when he sees a crowd of people, he doesn't see the crowd of people, you know, the way that most folks would. He sees it as, wow, each person has a soul. And it, does each person know Jesus? When Paul saw the crowd, right. he had a different perspective. Much like Jesus, when he had compassion on, on the multitudes who followed him, he wanted to make sure that everyone had a relationship with the Lord. That's incredible. Well, he was telling us a lesson of the prodigal son long before we heard the prodigal oh, yeah, son. Oh, right. <laughs> you know? you're, you're exactly right. Well, the Lord was obviously the master of, of, of caring for the person that other people didn't care about. He was great at that. Uh, the, the widowed, uh, the people who are, were sick, the people who were broke, uh, the people who were emotionally poor, he made sure he connected with those. Not the Pharisees and Sadducees who had all, who have the power, the money, the prestige. He, he cared about the common man. Paul was the same way. Uh, Christianity grew not out of the riches of up top, but out of the poverty from the bottom. And that, that's just incredible how, how God did that. Only God can use a carpenter stepson to change the world. Well, you know, it's funny. Pliny the Elder said, uh, in his, and he wrote a lot about the time uh -huh. of Christ, he said that what set this religion out, now I'm paraphrasing, of yes. course, what set Christianity apart was it was not born of magnificent uh, people and magnificent Noble beasts people. and gods. Right. And it didn't come in uh, great bolts of thunder. And, right. and it came up literally from the, most, the common man. Right. And he said that's one reason he explained that it grew at such an unprecedented right. rate during his time. It connected with the common people. It, it, it did. And to even make it into his <clears throat> histories... Right. Because he was the official. Yes, sir. Right, right. Even he, you know, it had to be very noteworthy. He would never have seen it. Yeah, <clears throat> significant. Well, the Lord calls us to reach everybody. You know, whether they're 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 they're, they're rich or famous or they're down and out, God calls us to reach everyone in some aspect or another. Exactly. So, I'm going to thank y'all for tuning in today. This is a snapshot of what we do at Sunday School every week here at Friendship Baptist. But also, uh, grab your Bible and finish the rest of, of, the, of the lesson, or grab and explore the Bible. There's a few more pages there. We want to make sure that you have a, a really good study with the Lord and with other people. I'm so glad you tuned in. I want to thank y'all for tuning in. This is our first time we've had a female, as our, our, our minister said, of education, and a um, minister said of uh, communication and, and student ministry, said, a rose among the thorns. That's tr <laughs> that's totally true. She is a rose among all the thorns. I want to thank you all for doing that. Remember, Ephesians uh, chapter 2, verse 10 says that we are God's workmanship, created to do good works. Do something for the Lord today, small or big. Let the Lord use you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I can't wait to see you next week.